the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today is Wednesday, 17th of November, and we thank God for the gift of this day, for bringing us together. The Mother Church marks the memorial of St. Elizabeth of Hungary. Today, 17th November as well, is my birthday. I was born about uh, 40 something years ago. And I really thank God on this day as I celebrate the memorial of my birth. We come before the Lord, dear brothers and sisters. We are sinners and we stand in need of mercy. To prepare ourselves, therefore, to celebrate worthy the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon. I confess to the Almighty God. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Elizabeth of Hungary recognized and revered Christ in the poor. Grant through her intercession that we may serve with unfailing charity the needy and thus afflicted. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. In those days, it happened also that seven brothers and their mother were arrested and were being compelled by the king under torture with whips and cords to partake of unlawful swine's flesh. The mother was especially admirable and worthy of honorable memory. Though she saw her seven sons perish within a single day, she bore it with good courage because of her hope in the Lord. She encouraged each of them in the language of their fathers, filled with a noble spirit, 
She fired her wounds, reasoning, with a man's courage, and said to them, I do not know how you came into being in my womb. It was not I who gave you life and breath, nor I who set in order the elements within each of you. Therefore, the creator of the world, who shaped the beginning of man and advised the origin of all things, will, his, will in his mercy give life and breath back to you again, since you now forget yourselves for the sake of his laws. Antiochus felt that he was being treated but promise with oaths that he would make him rich and, um, and enviable if he would turn from the laws of his fathers and that he would take him for his friend and entrust him with public affairs. Since the young man would not listen to him at all, the king called the mother to him and urged, urged her to advise the youth to save himself. After much arguing on his path, she undertook to persuade her son. But, leaning close to him, she spoke in their native, native tongue as follows, deriding the cruel tyrant, my son, have pity on me. I carried you nine months in my womb and nursed you for three years and have reared you and brought you up to this point in your life and have taken care of you. I beg you, my child, to look at the heaven and the earth and see everything that is in them and recognize that God did not make them out of things that existed. Thus, also mankind came into being. Do not fear this busher, but prove worthy of your brothers. Accept death, so that in God's mercy, I may get you back again with your brothers. While she was still speaking, the young man said, What are you waiting for? I will not obey the king's command, but I obey the command of the law that was given to our fathers through Moses. But you, who have contrived all sorts of evil against the Hebrews, will certainly not escape the hands of God. The word of the Lord. When I awake, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence. When I awake, oh Lord, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence. When I awake, oh Lord, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence. When I awake, Oh Lord, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence. When I awake, oh Lord, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence. Oh Lord, hear a cause that is just. Pay heed to my cry. Turn your ears to my prayer. No deceit is on my lips. 
When I awake, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence. I kept my steps firmly in your path. My feet have never faltered. To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, bear my words. O Guide me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. As for me, in justice, I shall behold your face. When I awake, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence. When I awake, O oh Lord, I shall be with the vision of your presence. When I awake, O oh Lord, I shall. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 I choose you from the world. You should go up here. Prince, and that your fruit should abide, taste the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus proceeded to tell a parable because he was near to Jerusalem and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. He says, therefore, a nobleman went into a far country to receive kingly power and then return. Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten pounds and said to them, Trade with this till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent an embassy after him, saying, we do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned, having received the kingly power, he commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know what they had gained by trading. The verse came before him, saying, Lord, your pound has made ten pounds more. And he says to him, Well done, good servant. Because you have been faithful in a very little, you shall have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, your pound has made five pounds. He says to him, And you are to be over five cities. Then another came, saying, Lord, here is your pound. For I was afraid of you, because you are a severe man. You take up what you did not lay down, and reap what you did not sow. 
He says to him, I will condemn you out of your own mouth, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking up what I did not lay down, and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money into the bank, and at my coming, I should have collected it with interest? And he said to those who stood by, Take the power from him, and give it to him who has the ten pounds. And they said to him, Lord, he has ten pounds. I tell you, to everyone who has, will more be given. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine, who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slay them before me. And when Jesus had said this, he went ahead, going up to Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning to you all. Um, the first reading, you know, we're reading the book of Maccabees since this week, is uh, one that is quite fascinating and challenging. The story of this woman and her seven sons slain by King Antiochus Epiphanes for refusing to go against the law of their ancestors, the laws of God. To eat pig, which by Jewish law was forbidden. And our scripture says, the mother was especially admirable and worthy of honorable memory. And indeed, it is quite true. Why? Not only did she watch her seven sons slaughtered before her presence, she encouraged them even in the face of death, not to do evil in the sight of God, even if it, if it will cost them their lives. And she said to them, Hold on to the faith of your fathers. God who gave you this life can give you another. And by her encouragement especially, the sons refused to disobey God and obey Antiochus. Similar to the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abadnego, who will not disobey God to worship the idol of Nebuchadnezzar. And in her presence, all seven sons were slaughtered. She herself was killed to join them. And as the, the story is an abridged one, what we read is an abridged story, as if you read the full text, it's uh, 2 Maccabees chapter 7, beginning from verse 1. It tells also that the reason why this woman encouraged her sons to hold on to the faith of their fathers and not sin against God, even when death was staring them in the face, was because of their hope in eternal life. Because of their hope in eternal life. From the readings of today's Mass, there are two very important things I'd like us to reflect on. Number one is the courage and the disposition of this woman. And she is before us today as a sterling example of good parenting. We are in an age where many parents are failing in their responsibility of raising up children to know God, to love God, to serve God, to fear God. We are in an age where some parents, some even deliberately, intentionally teach their children to do evil. We are in an age where parents, by failing to teach their children to do right, implicitly teach and encourage them to do wrong. And in all of this, we see a continuous increase in moral decadence. People 
raising children who have no fear of God, who have no love of God, who have no value for the things of God. We are more and more seeing in our society today people who will prefer the pleasures of now to the detriment of their souls that will live forever. On Sunday, my homily was titled Spiritual Talk, Stock Taking, and I did speak about the need for us to always keep our eternal reward in view. And one of the things I did say to us, or at that mass rather was, that many of the reasons why people will miss heaven are things that are temporary and things that are temporal. We met them in this world, we will leave them in this world. We will not go anywhere with them. What were the offers the king was making to these children? I will give you riches. I will give you honor. I will place you among noble men. After that, what next? After that, what next? When they die, who will remember the riches? Who will remember the honor? Who will remember the nobility? Will the grave have regards for that? No. At the end, we are all dust and we shall return to dust. But then, as Jesus says, that we should ask ourselves a very important question. What shall it profit us if we gain the whole world and lose our souls? And so, dear brothers and sisters, especially those of you who are parents, the woman in our first reading today puts a challenge to all of us in the upbringing of not only our biological children but every young person around us by the examples we give to them and by the things that we consciously teach them are we guiding them in the right path to keep the word of god to keep the commands of god even when the odds do not favor them or are we teaching them to value temporary temporal material gains at the risk of losing their identity with God in heaven. And this is not only about children, it is also about us. We too should take this example from this woman. We want to choose us. The second thing I'd like to call our attention to for us to reflect on is um, the consciousness we need to keep before us always that at the end of our lives we shall render an account to God of what we have done with this life he gave to us. This woman was saying to her children, do not sin against God because we have hope in another life to come that God shall give to us. In the gospel reading, Jesus tells the parable of the king who gave money to his servants to do business and he went away and came back and called them to render an account to him. God has given us also our lives. God has given us our gifts, our talents. God has given us opportunities to use and make profit. God has given us all of these to bear fruit. All. The question we need to ask ourselves is, what are we doing with what God has given to us? In John chapter 15 verse 16, Jesus says, I chose you that you should go and bear fruit. I chose you that you should go and bear fruit. One day, when this earthly life is ended and we stand before God, God shall ask us all that I gave to you. The life, the opportunities, the blessings. Give me an account of them. When that time comes, what shall we present to God? Shall we be like the servants who will come and say, you gave me this, here's the fruit of what you gave me. Or we shall be like the one who will come and say, take back what you gave to me. And we return back to him empty-handed. Dear brothers and sisters, we must never forget, as we live our lives every day, that a time shall come when we shall account to God everything that we have done with this life that he has entrusted to us, with all of the opportunities that he brings our ways. May it not be that we stand before God 
empty handed with no fruit to show it is our hope and this is God's desire for us that when we come to him he will say to us well done good and faithful servant to the prophet Ezekiel God says in Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11 I have no interest in the death of a sinner God is not interested in seeing us damned forever but it is in our hands to decide whether we shall enter into heaven or not and this is by what we do every day the grace of God is available to support us let us do our best to cooperate with that grace so that when our time comes when our end comes and we stand before God we shall be able to say to him you gave me this this is the fruit I have brought back and God shall say to us well done good and faithful servant may God bless his word in our hearts through Christ our Lord Render my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people and grant that we who celebrate your son's work of boundless charity may by the example of Saint Elizabeth of Hungary be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and our God. When the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness, and bring it to experience on this earth the gift you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim.
Front of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them that they do fall. That they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and gave it to us, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spreads throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope Ignatius, our Bishop, and Solemn Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Paul Augustine Emmanuel, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in your death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, our husband, with the blessed apostles, Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the world, throughout the ages, we merit to be coerced with our life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord, 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 Lord be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, to say to your apostles, I leave you peace by peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Man of God. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I believe that I shall receive the sacred body of Jesus Christ to eat and his precious blood to drink. My God, I believe this with all my heart.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we who are renewed by these sacred mysteries may follow the example of Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, who honored you with tireless devotion and by suppressing charity was of service to your people through Christ our Lord. Thank you for being part of the mass. Thank you for your patience. We thank the management of uh, CTV for coming. We have you in our prayers. And we have every cause to believe that very soon God is lifting the Catholic television to a greater height. Remind all of you of uh, feast day coming up on Sunday. Go and prepare for that so that we come and have a fruitful celebration. Let us stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And may the blessings of the Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you both now and forever. Go in peace. The Mass is sended.